Welcome biologists. Today we are looking at oxidative phosphorylation and the chemiosmotic theory to do with respiration. This is taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology 5.2.2. So in previous videos we've had a look about glycolysis. Uh, we've also had a look at uh, the link reaction and we've also had a look at the Krebs cycle. We are now on to oxidative phosphorylation. Um, so I'm going to draw out for you the process of oxidative phosphorylation. So over here we have reduced NAD and reduced FAD that have been produced either in the glycolysis links or the Krebs cycle. And they are currently in the matrix of the mitochondria. Now they arrive at my inner membrane, which is made of my folded inner membrane, which is basically my cristae, and my reduced NAD and my reduced FAD will um, dissociate to give off my H plus ions and my electrons. Now my electrons here will enter into the electron transport chain and they will go through a series of redox reactions, which is oxidation and redu reduction as it passes through these electron carriers. Now, as it passes, as the electron passes through these electron carriers, it releases energy. And this energy is used to actively transport these hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. Now, the intermembrane space is the space between the inner membrane, the inner folded membrane, and the outer membrane of the mitochondria. Now, what this does is it causes a buildup of hydrogen ions within my intermembrane space. And this creates a proton gradient. So therefore, what my protons or my hydrogen ions now want to do is get back into my matrix. And they do that by flowing through ATP synthase. And, a and in the process of flowing through ATP synthase, they will make ATP by joining ADP plus PI to make ATP. My hydrogen ions and my electrons that have left my electron transport chain will now join to oxygen, which is my final electron acceptor, to make water. Also a couple more key terminology here uh, and the, the form formation of ATP uh, using ATP synthase is called chemiosmosis. So chemiosmotic theory is the process of making ATP by using a membrane and ATP synthase. So there you have the chemiosmotic theory and oxidative phosphorylation. A little bit more we need to know though. Um, Okay, so in theory, in theory, uh, reduced NAD should produce 2.5 molecules of ATP and FAD, reduced FAD should produce 1.5 molecules of ATP. Therefore, from glycolysis, I get two lots of ATP from substrate level phosphorylation. I have two reduced NAD, therefore I should get five ATP. So as a result, from glycolysis, we should get seven lots of ATP produced in oxidative phosphorylation as a, as a result of this. In the link reaction, um, I have two reduced NADs, therefore I should get five ATPs uh, produced in the oxidative phosphorylation process. And in my Krebs cycle, I, I already have two ATP from um, for subject level phosphorylation. I should get um, six reduced NADs, which should therefore generate 15 lots of ATP in, ox in oxidative phosphorylation. I also have two reduced FADs, which should therefore produce three lots of ATP during the oxidative phosphorylation process, giving me a total of 20 here. Therefore, if I add all these up, I should get a total of 32 molecules of ATP produced through aerobic respiration. However, this theoretical yield very rarely occurs, uh, and this is because some of the hydrogen ions leak across the mitochondrial membrane. Therefore, I don't get as much of a proton gradient. Some of the ATP produced is used for active transport of pyruvate into the mitochondria, because don't forget that's produced in glycolysis in the cytoplasm and also some of the reduced NAD that is also formed within glycolysis also needs to be actively transported into the mitochondria. So there we have it, we've looked at the process of oxidative phosphorylation, the role of electron carriers and oxygen, the cristae and also the electron transport chain and this proton gradient. Guys, good luck with your exams.